Yeah, welcome back uh, to the Python programming. So we were discussing about module two, and uh, we stopped at something like uh, understanding how to find the largest number. So we'll continue with that. Okay. So we stopped at what the logic of finding the largest number, which we had taken this as an example. So with an assumption that all are, all the input or the data set is our positive number. So with that intention in the mind, we'll discuss about the code, right? So we took right. Let the initial value be minus one. So initially we'll take okay. Let let the largest be minus one. Now why minus one is valid? Because we told we are putting one restriction. What is it? Our data is always a positive number. So our data set is always positive. With that intention in the mind, minus one is valid, right? So what we are doing? This is our loop where we are trying to find. And what is we are trying to print something after and before, right? So what is before? Minus one. What is after? We'll worry about that in the next step, right? So for we we use a smarter concept what is a smarter concept for in so now it's a finite so we know exactly like okay number of iteration that is taken here right so we know that there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 elements so hence we clearly know that this statements will run six iterations or this will take six totally six iterations so now What is the concept of foreign? We understood that this variable will flow through, will take each value at one iteration. So first time it will be nine, next time forty-one, and so on. So what is the logic? They we are taking the initial value as minus one. Then we compare the current value. Is it greater than the largest so far, which is minus one? So in our case, it is nine, nine compared with minus one. So what is the logic? We have like nine. Greater than minus one, so which happens to be true in our case. Hence, we make nine as the largest one. So we modify that largest so far equal to the number that we have read. We are done with that. What is next step? Here, this whole thing is inside a for loop. So we are trying to print what is the largest number and what number you have read from the iteration. So in our example, what we have read is nine, and which is the largest? That is also nine. So next we go back again. Next time what we have read is forty-one. When forty-one is compared with the largest, which is nothing but nine. So again we are trying to compare nine with forty-one, where forty-one is greater. Hence our largest is also forty-one, and this is also forty-one. Now a small change. So here next iteration what we are reading is twelve. Next iteration what we are reading is twelve. We will compare twelve with what the largest number, which is nothing but forty-one. So we are comparing 12 with 41. So what the number that we have read is 12. Largest so far is 41. We are comparing. So when you compare 12 and 41, still the largest is still 41. So no more changes here. So we print largest so far is 41. The number that we have read is 12. So now look at. So we are able to know like what is that we are reading and for which we are comparing and what is the largest number. So if you iterate through. Next time, what we read is three. Next time, what we read is seventy-four. Next time, what we read is fifteen. And finally, when you come out of that, we have a largest number, which is nothing but seventy-four. So it will print after good. What is the largest number so far? It is seventy-four. So our logic, this whole thing, like may not be the logic what I have written here, right? So it can be based on my problem statement. The this whole list can change. The logic can change, but Once it is familiar with one kind of example, then any problem statement that we have, definitely we can find a solution here. So very important is what the Python programming is helping me to use the concept which is a smarter for loop, which is for in. So if I want to convert this into a normal for loop, there are a lot of things like iteration I should have i equal to some initial value. Then come up with a condition. Then come up with whether you are incrementing or decrementing. All those things. So uh, nothing to worry about. That simply I can tell for in with a list of statement. I I can keep safe saying that okay. It will iterate through all the values inside the list. So I need not worry about my termination condition, which is taken care by this statement. Right. So what we normally do is we want a solution. Whether we use a for loop or a while loop or do loop, it doesn't matter. so according to as what we want a solution so as a programmer our choice will be what make it as simple as possible as efficient as possible right 
So, this is the last class we discussed about the logic. So, today we have discussed about how to convert that into a code. So, going further we have few more examples which I will be discussing few things and which I will leave as a homework for you. So, where you will try to figure out what is the best solution for that and then in next session we will we'll talk about that right. So, now I will discuss about something counting in a loop. So, if you go back to our previous example what is that we are doing here? We are trying to find the largest element that is all. Are we iterating through each of the element? Definitely yes. So, this logic has to change based on our requirement. So, here what is our requirement? Our requirement is counting. So, now I will iterate through and look for the count number of times I am iterating, number of times I am iterating. So, it will be it should be something like first iteration, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So, my count should be 6. So, when you look at what initial value was 0, then you are telling what is before, then you are using for in loop that is smarter if uh, for statement then things. So, in that case things is an iterative variable which will take 9 first time, 41 second time, third time, fourth, fifth, sixth. So, every time it takes a value it will iterate this once. So, in that case what will become count equal to 0 first. So, this will be 0 plus 1 when it is 9. So, count becomes 1 it will print 1. What is this 1 and 9 then? So, you, you cross check here. 1 is nothing but count and second thing is nothing but which element that we are processing. So, count is 1, element processing is 9. So, next time when count becomes 2, element is 41. So, 2, 41. Next 3, 12, 4, 3, fifth element 74, sixth element 15. Then after that there are no more elements automatically the control will come out of the for loop. It will print after the count, after count value is 6. So, now what is the change that from this example and our previous example? It was also same initial value before, after everything. What the change that we did? Only this logic. So, now I want to do remove this logic, add some other logic. What is that logic? Maybe a smallest, maybe finding a sum or finding an average. So, based on what is our problem statement, only this part has to be changed. So, look at the next example that we have is something like finding a sum. So, this logic changed, right. So, this I will not discuss, I leave as an homework to you. Please go through that, next session we will discuss about that. Another example continuing this, finding the average. So, once you have a sum, yeah, divide that, you get a average. So, this example also I leave as a homework to you. Then we have something called as filtering. So, do not get into conclusion that these are lot of problem statements, no, simple. What is the meaning of filtering? I want something to be not to be done or to be done, that is all. So, now look at you have values like 9, 41, 12, 3, 74, 14. What you want? You want to print if a value is greater than 20, then only you want to process. If a value is greater than 20, you want to process. If it is less than or equal to 20, what you want? You want to discard. So, that is what filtering is, that is all. So, do not get into conclusion filtering is something new concept, no nothing. You have something filter, you pass 10 elements, filter may filter out 5, pass only 5 elements or maybe filter out 8, pass only 2 elements. So, what is that filter is our concept here. What is filter in our example? Simple, value is greater than 20. So, I have a filter, I pass all the values. If value is greater than 20, 20 it will go. If value is not greater than 20, it is skipped. That is what the concept is. So, simple, I have list of values here. So, in our example 9 should not be processed, 41 should be processed, 12, 3 should not be processed, 15 should not be processed, so 74. So, in that case in our example what should happen? This print statement should execute only for 2, 1 is for 41, second is for 74. Look at the concept 41, 74. So, again coming back to same, this logic changes, rest I think will remain same, right. So, I have given you two things, one finding the sum you figure out, finding the average you figure out, then then how to use a boolean variable, right, how to use a boolean variable. So, here you based on some value like right? value equal to 3 I am doing something, right. So, this portion also where you can assign see a variable of type boolean there are only two things, one if it has a decimal number if it is or maybe in example we will take as a number. So, what is that I can have? I can have a, 
uh, a whole number, I can have a, a real number, right? Similarly, I can have a string and so on. So, if it is Boolean, if it is Boolean type, then I can have only two things. One is true, second one is false, right? So, in Python, the Boolean value is nothing but false or may be true, but very important is how to use it. It is not F A L S E, it is F A L S E, where F is a capital. Similarly, for true, T is capital, right? So, this is very important. So, you can assign where we told like something print statement, we can assign a uh, Boolean value to a, a variable and appropriately it prints. So, here this part we are assigning, here we are printing, right? So, the logic remains same for each iteration, it gets on, it will be executing the number of times. So, this how many number of times this is executed is completely based on number of elements in the list, right? So, it, which is finite in nature. So, similarly, how to find the largest using the same concept in a different way. So, finding the smallest, I leave as an assignment to you as a homework, you can refer to that or come out with the logic of it and we will discuss that in the next session. Okay. So, what is that we have discussed in our previous session and session till now, right? So, when you look at that, we discussed about an iterative variable and what is the meaning of iteration and in specific example looping structure like we discussed about a while loop, it is indefinite. Second, we identified a infinite loop, there is small change in this, right? Indefinite is different, infinite loop. Then how to come out of this infinite loop? We looked at, okay, there is some condition we want to come out for which we used a break. Opposite to that, we had something called as continue where we told we will execute but not come out of the while statement, we go back again for the next iteration. Then we discussed about a simple thing where we can use something called as a for loop, where we definitely know that number of iterations it is fixed, right? Then we discussed about iteration variables in all of this and some concept of looping and example not only largest, smallest, we also discussed about uh, the uh, summing, averaging and so on, but majorly concentrate on the largest part. So, here only because of change in the logic, there is nothing like okay, you, that we need to think a lot, nothing as such, right? So, but please remember that the smarter for loop we used, which is the concept of for in, right? So, that you have to remember. So, most of our examples and in daily life examples, we use this for in because lot of things are as a programmer, I need not worry about that. Right? So, this is the concept of uh, the iteration. So, maybe next topic that we will be taking about is uh, strings. So, going further, we will talk about strings. So, how to define a string, what operations that we can perform a string, then how string handling is done in Python. And there are lot of lot of good functionalities that are available in Python, where I need not write any function. I can call that function, get my job done, right? So, we will go further now. So, now, is a string something like arrays or can I define a string as a, a data data right so when you look at string string is a data type string is a data type now when you look into concept of string so what gets into mind is nothing but okay is it something like group of uh, characters together or alphabets together and so on so if you look at definition of it a string is a sequence of characters right so it's a sequence of characters special few things are there in python like hello is a string hello is a string what is the difference hello with single quotes hello with double quotes so you can look at a string literals in python can be with single quotes can be with the double quotes so now we understood like it's a array of characters it can be in double quotes or a single quotes but how to use that right so this is an example so i a variable called str1 str1 what is the value hello so in double quotes i declare another variable called str2 with a value there t h e r e so now you can look at the difference here hello is in double quotes and there is in single quotes so you look at a string literal uses both either it can be in a single quote or it can be a double quote so we have two strings str1 and str2 now if you look at this expression 
a special kind of expression str1 plus str2 what is this plus here so if you look at plus it we what do we get when we understand it's a plus simple it's a additional operation but provided what are my operands right so if you look at the upper left hand side and right hand side of plus are not numbers they are strings so if they are string plus will will there is a small change in understanding plus is not an arith arithmetic operator which is addition in nature it is a concatenation so what is concatenation concatenation is combining two strings together that's all right so what is str1 hello what is str2 there when you write plus then it will it will combine these two together and store in bob right so now what is our output first string second string combined together so in that case my output should be hello t h e r e so look at that i am printing bob look at this is the output hello t h e r e so now plus e has a special meaning so normal meaning of plus is what additional operator but when you write plus with string it is concatenation so there is a change in the meaning when based on the data type another example we'll take right so str3 equal to 1 2 3 in single quote so this became a string it's not a number this became a string you have str3 so what are we doing we are adding one so my expression is what my expression is 1 2 3 plus 1 but 1 2 3 is in string it's not a number so now plus is nothing but arithmetic operator where we need to add both of them together provided they are integer or they are numbers but here this is not a number this is a number so this happens to be a string so if both are strings simple concatenation if both are number simple addition but here there is one string and another concatenation hence we cannot add them together so it cannot be a concatenation because it's a number we cannot add them because it's a string but we know that this 1 2 3 b can be converted into a number uh, here we have right so int str3 plus 1 so what is str3 str3 is this one this is nothing but str3 so now i convert this into a number so string 1 2 3 gets converted into a number so if it is a number plus 1 then both of them are number so this becomes an additional operator it will not act like a string because this is not a string this is not a string this will cannot be a concatenation operator it becomes a additional operator so in the case this becomes valid so now according to our example str3 is 1 2 3 which is a string once i make call int as a function it becomes a number 1 2 3 you are adding 1 to that it becomes 1 2 4 so when you look at print x you get this value as 1 2 4 right so in that case plus if both the operands are string it acts as a concatenation plus if both the operands are uh, a number it will perform as an additional operator provided if one of them is string and the other one is not a string then it will can it cannot add so look at that error here type error type error and as i told in the previous session that when you get an error it will also mention the name of the error and some hint for us what is the hint cannot concat str and int so in that case it is telling us like look you have made a mistake what is that mistake you are trying to use a string with an integer and trying to do a concatenation which cannot be done so we can go back to the code do the modification get the work done so here how to define a string we got the concept then if i am using a plus operator how to how do i achieve the concatenation third if it is uh, if it is a number then i can use something called as conversion explicit conversion and convert that into an integer and add them so for string plus means concatenation when a string contains number it can still be a string example is this we can convert number so if i have a string i can convert that into a number and this is the example so plus has a different meaning based on the number and the string that is nothing but the data type so now how do i read data so in our previous example we have, we have used this 
we have used this raw input one function we have used raw input recall our while loop we use the raw input recall our continue concept break concept for all those examples we use the same function raw input right so reading data from a keyboard we store in a variable and that what we are trying to read is a string what we have read is a string right so there are few special things right so now if you look at this example name equal to we are, uh, enter will be printed on the screen whatever we type is taken as input to name so uh, in our example ramesh became the uh, value for the name i print name we get ramesh now second example is very important a raw input enter so we get enter and we give a value so 100 gets on to the apple so now in our first example ramesh was input so we knew that it is a set of characters which is nothing but a string but my second example is 100 my second example is 100 so now after i get 100 i am making x equal to apple minus 10 what is apple apple is nothing but 100 100 minus 10 90 but i don't get 90 reason this apple is not an integer so this raw input the data what i am reading is a string so hence 100 is a string so string minus 10 is invalid so what should i do convert string into a number how to convert int so i'll tell int apple apple is nothing but a string with value 100 so this becomes a numerical value 100 minus 10 which becomes 90 90 we are copying into x print x we got 90 here so what we need to understand here is in our previous example concatenation also we got this problem you have a string you are trying to add which will not possible similarly you have a string here which you are trying to subtract which is not possible here so you should convert that into a number so data what i am trying to read is a string so keep that in mind it's a string if you want to do some ma number manipulation you convert that into a number using a function called int similarly you have lot of functions for the conversion number conversion right so raw input is always a string so keep this in mind raw input is always a string based on our requirement we'll try to convert that into appropriate values or data <coughs> now getting into strings right getting into strings so for example my string is banana so i have a code like fruit equal to banana fruit equal to banana so what is my string banana how it is stored it is stored in this form like set of characters where my index always starts from zero my index always starts from zero so in that case the string i can access each character of a string with an index so my index of b is zero a is one and so on the last character is five now number of characters is six in our case number of characters now why index is 5 reason as index starts with 0 6 minus 1 will be last which is nothing but a 5 in our case so always remember that the first character index is always 0 now for example my array name is fruit or not array string my string is fruit as string is are a set of characters i want to access fourth character of a fruit i want to access fourth character of the fruit so what will be my index as this index starts with 0 my fourth character will be at index 3 look first second third fourth so what is the index index is 3 so always you have to figure out like that like what if you want fourth character so it should be the fourth character so as index is starting from 0 it is it should be 4 minus 1 so index is 3 now in our example what is fruit of 1 right fruit of 1 1 means what it should it is not my first character because my first character index is 0 so 1 means 1 plus 1 which is nothing but in our case first second it is a so you should be very careful here as our index starts with 0 so don't come to a conclusion like okay index 1 indicates first character no never so be careful there right then uh, okay now look at what we are doing here letter equal to fruit of 1 so in that case i have a variable letter fruit of 1 means what a this is my fruit 
print letter. What is letter? Letter is pointing to fruit of one. Fruit of one is A. It will print A. So, look at how we can access each element of a string. Right? So, simple index 0 goes till the length of the string minus 1. Length of the string is 6, 6 minus 1 index is the last index will always be length minus 1. Right? Then we can also have some kind of manipulations, arithmetic uh, manipulations inside the indexes. Like example, you look at that x minus 1, x minus 1. So, you can have something of this form where you tell fruit, I will use a short form fr, x minus 1. Now, what is the value of x? Assume the value of x is 3, value of x is 3. So, in that case, I can write this as what? fr of 2 or fr of x minus 1 provided x equal to 3. So, now if x is 3, then this will be evaluated to 2. What is fr of 2? fr is nothing but fruit, fruit of 2 is n. So, not necessarily that you should have a number here. It can, it can also be a expression. So, you can have a expressions inside that. So, index need not be a number, it can be an expression. So, index value can be an expression also. Example value or an expression of this kind. So, not necessarily value, it can also be an expression. That expression will be evaluated and the value will be taken as an index value. Now, how to access a value? What we have done? name of the string, then square bracket and then the index. So, what is the format? Name of the string, name of the string, square bracket and then here comes the index, index. This becomes our string name, right. So, this is how we access each, each character of the string using a square bracket and what is inside the square bracket? Index and what is the concept of index? Start with 0, end with length minus 1 end with a length minus 1. And what we can have in index? A normal value or an expression, expression which will be evaluated. Right? Now, we are trying to access a character which is not allocated. Example, if you take, I have a variable where I have 3 characters, where I have 3 characters, where index is 0, index is 1, index is 2. But what am I doing? I am accessing the fifth index. Fifth index is nothing but my sixth element. Sixth element. But when I look at the string, I do not have a sixth element. So, it has to throw me an error. What is the error? Yes, I am getting an error called index error. So, I am trying to access a value which is not in that range. right? So, look at that string index out of range. Look at the error information that we have, string index out of range. So, in that case, I am trying to access an index which is not allocated. So, how, how good the uh, program has been written such that I get an error, I also get information about what, why am I getting that error, a hint for correction. right? So, this is how you should be very careful while you access the elements of the array. So, make sure that you do not access beyond that what is being allocated for you. Then, okay, this we understood like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there are 6 characters. So, length of the string is 6, length of the string is 6, but we counted that. But how, how if, what if we want that as a program, right? So, simple, we have a function len which gives us length. So, now what is the string? String name is fruit, this is the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, fruit is equal to banana, then we will call a function len pass this fruit here. So, it will find length, number of characters inside that string. So, in our example 6, so look at when we run the code, we get the value as 6. So, len is a function which is used to find the length of a string. So, there are a lot of functions like this which is available in Python. Same example. Okay. So, can we do something like uh, writing a function of our own? That is what the concept is, writing a function of our own. So, for which we have a code here. Uh, maybe uh, we will discuss more about that in the further sessions, but a function is some code 
that we want to store in a name which we want to use more number of times. So, now what is the concept of this? There is some set of code which we are repeating regularly. So, instead of writing the code every time like this four occurrences I write this code once and we will not write everywhere we will just try to have a reference like this. So, what is the meaning of that? If I have some set of code which repeated many number of times make that as a function make that as a function and wherever required you call the function that is all right. So, when you have a function you may have like okay, what some input to this some output to this right. So, what do we call them we call them as parameters. So, what can be here a logic whatever based on our requirement we can write the logic whatever we want right. So, now how to define a function we use a keyword called def right. So, uh, same length function now why did we why we did not use def here right it is still len is a function now why we did not write def remember this length is not a user defined function which we wrote right it is a built in function. So, built in function indicates that already the code for this length is already written pre compiled readily available I can use that. So, not necessary I will write a function. So, based on my requirement I can write a function call the function how to write a function use the concept of def and so on further we will discuss that more about it. Now, so as usual we understood like one what is a string how to get access each character of the string then I want to iterate through the string. So, in the case each time I want to access a character do some functionality similar to what we discussed in our first session talking about iteration variable same thing here right. Small change that is applicable for us is what a conditional part. So, now what am I suppose right I will start from index 0 go till the last index go till the last index. Now, how to find last index we do not know, but going back to our concept of length going back to concept of length we understood that length is nothing but 6 in our case if I do length minus 1 which will give me the last index. So, length minus 1 will be my last index start index is 0. So, I know that. So, using that we can write a loop where it iterates through each character of the string ends at the last character. So, now look at index value is 0 index less than length of root. Now, in our example length of root is nothing but 6. So, now index will start from 0, 0 less than 6. So, in that case it, it starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 when it comes to 6, 6 less than 6 will not execute will terminate. So, in that case I am running 5 times. So, look at that starting from 0 till 5. So, totally 6 iterations. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0 1 2 3 4 and 5. So, we will end up with all those indexes being covered and in the loop I can do whatever the processing that I want here right. So, I can print I can do everything, but what is important if I am using a while loop I have to be sure that iterative variable there is a modification. If I convert this as for in if I convert this as for in statement then this iteration I need not worry because for in statement will take care of it right. So, a looping structure I can access each element I can put a condition using a function called len which will tell me the what is the length total length of the string. But be careful length of the string will not be the last index length of the string minus 1 will always be the last index. So, important do not forget about length of the string minus 1 is the last index. So, I told right just now that if I use for in iteration variable I need not worry look at this example fruit equals to banana for in right what is my set name fruit what am I printing letter where is my iteration variable nothing where am I changing my iteration variable letter nothing, but still this will work why because this concept is helping me to do the things. So, as a programmer better option I will use for in statement. So, a foreign statement is a definite loop 
right because I know like how many times iterating. So, I know that how many times this will go on 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Right. Then for while loop what is the difference? I put a condition but iteration I have to take care. Right. So, there are multiple choices say always for a particular problem you will have multiple solutions you figure out which is best opted for you try to use that if a choice is given to me I will prefer to write for in statement because it is making me to forget it is making me to not to make much headache about increase incrementing my decrementing or any variable of that by mistake I do small change here I will end up in problem but for this I need not worry because this is helping me to do all the things for me. So, another uh, application of that is something like counting. So, what should I do? Simple. All that will be same, only the logic part I have to change. So, now when you look at this code, what we are talking? We have word which is banana count equal to 0 for letter in word. So, letter will be first time B, next time it will be A, next time na, N, A, N, A, and so on. And we are checking if letter equal to a count equal to count plus 1 and then finally, we are printing count. Now, look at when you look at this code what do we understand? So, when you study this code we have some string count is initialized to 0 then we are referring to each iteration we are going to each letter and we are checking with what a. So, when you cross check this is this the code trying to count how many characters a are there in the string perfectly right. So, what your thought is perfect. So, where you tell if it is a you are incrementing count equal to count plus 1 and finally, you are printing count. So, if I want to look back how many occurrences of n are there I instead of a I will make n. So, this logic is telling me what how many times a is occurring in this string. So, I, I, as usual we, we discussed this in the previous session also right this is our iteration variable this is our character set where in our example it is a 6 character set. So, this is an example like what I explained just now like what happens each time what happens each time. So, it will advance a character a letter then print that letter go back advance next and go back till you end up end up with the last letter once you end up with last letter it will come out here right. So, same example what I have explained is this is the form of a diagram index 0 index length minus 1 which is 6 minus 1 which is 5. So, now when you compare this example with our earlier example there is a small change that is all here what for in look at that what we have given we have not mentioned a variable we have directly given the string literal here we have not mentioned any variable we gave a string literal look at this previous example yeah we gave a variable word we gave a variable word but in our example it is directly a string literal now which is our uh, uh, iteration variable letter letter is our iteration variable where are the changes that we are doing here no still it is iteration definitely yes because it is for in. Okay. So, here uh, till now what we discussed like example what is a string then how to declare a string and how to process each character in a string right. So, starting from index 0 to the index last index. So, how did we get last index? Yeah we understood that we can find the length of a string length of a string minus 1 will be our last index, but we do not want only one character we want more number of characters. Like example I want to start uh, from index 0. I want to read first three characters, but how do we achieve that right till now we discussed about square bracket and telling like index 0, 1, 2 and so on where we are trying to access one element, but we want to access an more than one element for which what is the concept something called a slicing right. So, that slicing will start uh, slicing right that slicing will take up that in the next session.